Hello, this is Gary LaRue of Microwave Journal. I'd like to welcome you to this webinar about a cloud-based antenna design platform for IoT systems. Presented by Mark Sands of Ignion and Elias Gaffari of Richardson RFPD. Before we begin the presentation, let me note a few items. The tab on your screen labeled Resource List contains the presentation slides, which you may download. After the presentation, we'll have time for questions. Please type yours in the Q&A box. The webinar is being recorded, so you can recommend it to colleagues who weren't able to join this live event. You'll find a link to the recording in the Events section of the Microwave Journal website. Now let me introduce our speakers. Mark Sands joined Ignion in 2021 to lead the Antenna Intelligence Cloud project. He brings some 15 years experience in the RF microwave industry, including roles at Sony, Amplion, and Qualcomm before joining Ignion. Mark has bachelor's and master's degrees in telecommunications engineering, a master's degree in electronics engineering, and a PhD in telecommunications and electronics engineering, all from the Université Autónoma de Barcelona in Spain. Elias Gaffari is a senior field application engineer at Richardson RFPD, where he specializes in RF microwave passive and active components. He has more than 25 years hardware design experience, including Catrine Automotive and Delphi, where he designed antennas and RF modules for satellite radio, GPS, cellular, and V2X applications. Elias received Bachelor and Master of Science degrees in Electrical Engineering at Concordia University in Montreal and a PhD in Antennas and Electromagnetics from Oakland University in Rochester Hills, Michigan. Mark, I'll turn the screen over to you now to start the technical presentation. Hello everyone and thanks for joining this webinar. My name is Mark Sanz, Senior RF Antenna Lead Engineer of Ignion, an antenna company from Barcelona. Even if most of you might not have heard about us, chances are that 99% of you have held a handset with antenna technology enabled by our inventors. Today, I'm going to introduce you the Antenna Intelligence Cloud and how it can predict the IoT device antenna performance in minutes. We have used all our of Ignion's antenna design know-how already implemented in thousands of end customer products and over 30 million IoT devices. Now, all this design know-how is available to any hardware design maker or design house through the Antenna Intelligence Cloud, with no need to have deep expertise in the RF domain in-house. We bring together all antenna aspects of your design in a single cloud-based platform to increase performance, shorten design cycles, eliminate design risks, and accelerate innovation. This is the story of how virtual antenna technology is changing the RF domain and how we got to where we are. Let's talk about the context where the Antenna Intelligence Club sits. Let's discuss now about two concepts. Let's start with a simple analogy of evolution. Evolution comes in waves, and when implemented with success, changes the world forever. Under the hood of these cars is where the difference truly sits. And an antenna is exactly that, inside an IoT device. Not visible, but making a material difference. And in our case, driven by a completely new technology. Using the latest technology, like a virtual antenna, is a like switching to an electric car. Not only it is a great experience, but also reduces cost compared to custom designed antennas. In simple worlds, you do not have to redesign your antenna for 5G or when designing an next gen IoT sensor. The virtual antenna adapts itself to your world and does not require to be changed when your designs or products evolve. Hence, it leads to a reduced engineering cost and a much faster time to market. How we do this, it's down to the basics of antennas and later on, we'll discuss with more detail on that. Let's now present the next concept, that is redefining the computing world, hyperscaling. 
The shift to cloud in IoT is starting to be dominated by hyperscalers. Increasingly, IoT implementations are now shifting towards these hyperscalers as scalability and robustness are a major requirement for successful large-scale applications. These complex applications need more data processing power, as well as advanced tools such as analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Hyperscalers provide low-cost onboarding, scalable software tools, and robust management platforms. And the same is happening in the hardware or sensor design domain. Major players like ARM and NXP have already announced their move to cloud-centric design, opening up the access to their technology through the same hyperscalers. We are glad to announce that Ignion is also putting 20 years of our know-how and the unique virtual antenna technology into a cloud-centric platform with AWS, and it's called the Antenna Intelligence Cloud, which provides a fully antenna design service in the cloud, resulting in a much more reliable, predictable, and easy to implement of the shelf antenna solution into any AOT device. Benefits of using our virtual antenna technology and the antenna intelligence cloud. We live in a connected world and we are connected to the world through any device. And such device shares data with others through the cloud. And through the cloud, then we can analyze this data and create intelligence around it. Bear in mind then that to do so, all those devices need a properly designed antenna in order to enable all these connections. In one hand, a good antenna design needs to let those connected devices reach longer ranges in order to not lose connectivity with the rest of the world anytime. And in the other hand, needs to extend their battery life as much as possible, because most of these devices don't allow an easy replacement of the batteries they have assembled in. This is only possible when the antenna mounted in the device is optimally tuned across the frequency range of operation in order to show the best efficiency possible. That's where our virtual antenna technology can help you in your IoT device design journey. Our technology virtual antenna was born with the aim of simplifying and enhancing antenna design. We removed the complexity found in other custom antenna designs by providing a miniature and a standard antenna component capable of being integrated inside any IoT device, regardless its form factor, without requiring customization. The antenna part remains the same and you just need to easily tune the matching network circuit to allow the antenna to operate in your desire, desired operating frequency bands. The system is composed by these three main elements. Our virtual antenna component, the matching circuit able to easily tune the operating frequencies in a range between 400 MHz and 10.6 GHz, and the ground plane inherently present in any wireless device. It brings a considerable value since you can accommodate any operating frequency range without modifying the antenna part and the PCB layout. So, by taking advantage of the virtual antenna technology, we are able to fulfill those three trifectas. One component is an off-the-shelf antenna, a standard SMD component so that can be mounted by means of any pick-and-place machine onto the surface of a PCB. Any IoT platform, the virtual antenna component is meant to fit in any device regardless of its size and shape, and protocol agnostic, meaning that they are suitable for all frequency bands thanks to the non-resonant nature of such antennas, and using the proper matching network topology in order to optimally tune the antenna for the required frequency range. Hence, you do not need to change your design every time new 5G bands or Wi-Fi 6 bands are being made available, or every time you want to launch your product in a different market. We can say that through a fully circuit-based antenna design, Virtual Antenna provides custom performance in an off-the-shelf chip. In this way, it simplifies the design cycle by converting antenna design and integration in a more predictable design journey. It translates 
a more complex mechanical design in just a simple rep design of a matching network. No expensive prototypes are needed anymore each time you need to assess the performance because it can be predicted in the very early stage of the design cycle, allowing you increasing performance, shortening design cycles and time to market, reducing costs, eliminating design risks and accelerating innovation. The IoT domain is growing substantially and more than 25 billion of devices are expected to be ready in 2025 in a very fragmented market. Each one with its own particularities in terms of size, communication standards to cover, targets, market to be deployed, use case, etc. Any device that you can imagine can be connected and an antenna will be required for establishing this connection. It supposes a big challenge ahead of us to ensure the success of every single wireless connection in this IoT long tail. There is then a strong need of defining a standard antenna integration process by providing clear guidance from the very beginning of the project to minimize undesired risks. We need to scale our antenna support according to the IoT market growth and to accommodate it. And this is precisely why we have developed our antenna intelligence service that will decouple antenna support and growth. This is why we are not proposing a standard antenna component, but also an antenna intelligence service that will guide our customer in properly selecting the antenna component that better fits their needs in the early stages of the design cycle. We are enabling the market optimal access to our antenna technology and early guidance and support on what to do and how to do it. The idea is to break the access barriers to our antenna technology and to provide to our customers a secure environment to test it in the fastest, in the fastest and easiest possible way. Thousands of proofed antenna designs are available today in our cloud, validated by an experienced antenna design team. Our cloud will allow us to leverage these learnings through artificial intelligence and machine learning tools. As our um, antenna intelligence service has been especially thought to support our customer in the early stages of the design cycle by providing a reliable standard antenna selection in order to lead any IoT development to success. As we are going to see later during the demo section, our antenna intelligence service will deliver a complete report, including selected antenna, design recommendations, and an estimation of the antenna performance in your PCB. Now, let me highlight the main benefits of our antenna intelligence service. It can be accessible worldwide anytime. It is a complete custom digital twin that will enable the easy access to our antenna technology to test it in your next IoT development. It provides the flexibility to cover always the required demand. It uses our antenna technology and know-how to provide higher RAF performance. It will allow you to be one step closer of your final device since it accelerates, it accelerates the design journey while increasing reliability and accuracy when moving from proof stages to design stages, including prototyping. The antenna intelligence service allows reducing NREs and time to market. The design provided includes all the required recommendations for the appropriate integrations, integration of the antenna component and matching network design. The service is offered completely free of charge and it is delivered in no more than 24 hours. The antenna intelligence service can be easily requested through a website or through the website of our partners such as Richardson. By filling a very basic information about the project, namely the PCB size, the communication standard and operating frequency ranges, we can deliver a complete report including the antenna selection, so the best antenna capable of meeting the customer requirements, the design recommendations to integrate the antenna component inside your PCB to ensure the best possible antenna performance, and the recommended topology and bill of materials for the matching network circuit that is being tuned to the required operating frequency bands. 
And altogether, with an estimation of the antenna performance in terms of reflection coefficient and antenna efficiency. In this way, you can know from the very beginning if the antenna is going to meet your expectations in order to accomplish your particular antenna targets. Let's then start with the demo. As Richardson has joined the Air Revolution and is a partner of the Antenna Intelligent Cloud, we are able to reach the Antenna Intelligent Service through their landing page. So let's click on this link, which brings us to the Antenna Intelligence Service form based on the my landing page of Richardson. Here, if we click to request form, we are guided to, to the input form. Here we see an explanation about what the Antenna, Antenna Intelligence Cloud Service uh, can provide. Basically, as uh, we already discussed, we'll provide the, the best antenna selection from Ignion that uh, is fitting the um, the targets that, that is best fitting the targets. Then a design recommendations, um, how to integrate the antenna in your device, and also uh, the performance simulation of the antenna in terms of uh, reflection coefficient and antenna efficiency. For instance, uh, let's just start with an example. Um, say that we want to design uh, device, an IoT device, uh, using the communication standard LTE um, in a dual band uh, frequency range, for instance, this one, and with 142 millimeters of length and 50 millimeters of width. Um, they um, say that the IoT uh, device is an asset tracking device, and then Let's uh, leave it as is, just choose for me the preferred antenna field. In this case, then, um, the cloud will provide um, the recommended antenna for your application without having to choose with, with any of, of the other ones. Um, later on, we will just go back to this example, but we will change uh, this selection to another antenna. Okay, then let's fill the project info. So Mark in the first name field, in the last name, Sans for instance, my email, and my company, my area, say, Spain and project name and the estimated annual units that I think that um, my device will have. For instance, this one, 50K to 100K and the estimated production date of the that device, 20 October. Um, we can choose here if which RF module we are using. Let's put custom module here now. And then if we accept the terms of service and the privacy policy, we are already uh, ready to submit the request. Okay, so everything has, has uh, gone well. And now, um, if we check our inbox, we see that we have just received a confirmation email about this request. It's uh, letting the customer know that um, you have submitted the, the form and this is your number request. Um, it says also that within 24 hours, as soon as your digital twin is ready, you will get the report with the results. 
Um, then here we see it's already there. So we have received already the, the email with the report in this case. Um, and that email has this, uh, this information inside. So it's letting you know the customer name, the date when it was submitted, um, the service report number, and and here it will appear uh, an email about um, the project owner um, that will follow up your your project. Okay, we can also click here if you have questions, and then directly write your doubts here if you like. If you go up down, we can see also the requirements that were set in the form. So in this case, the application was an asset tracking device. The PCB dimensions here we see 142 by 50 millimeter. The communication standard used is LTE. The proposed antenna selected by the Antenna Intelligence Cloud Service is the TRIO, the NN03310. And these are the requested frequency ranges. If we go a bit more down, also, um, we give the option to the customer to ask for help, and it will happen the same. So you will be able to um, ask questions to directly to the to the project owner that will follow up um, this this submit. If we enter to the um, to the PDF, then we'll see a lot of information. Let me go briefly uh, to the presentation slides to um, talk about them um, from there. So if we continue with the presentation, here we'll have a deep analysis about the report we are going to receive. Um, first of all, what we will see in the in the report is the um, basic information um, of the submit that we did. So the customer name, when it was submitted, the date, and the survey report number, which will allow us to track it anytime, and the Ignion support email. And also a summary of the uh, requirements that uh, are specified for this device in the form. The application, asset tracking, dimensions, 142 by 50, communication standard, LTE, the selected antenna by the Antenna Intelligence Cloud Service, and the requested frequency range, which in this case is a dual band case. What comes next? Next will come the antenna placement of the PCB. So the antenna of, of the in the PCB that we can see here that this in the corner is the, the antenna uh, NN03310, the trio antenna. And it is connected to uh, with a feeding line to the matching network, which is located here. So um, it's really recommended and it's also specified in the in the in the design recommendations um, later on that this structure needs to be designed as it is explained here and as it is defined here. Um, here we also see that um, the dimensions of the PCB are 142 and 50 is the width. The clearance, it's a full clearance design, so you have a clearance also of 50. And then you have a length of this clearance of 12 millimeters, right? Then what comes next? It comes the matching network topology. So here we see this schematic. We have the antenna type. In this case, we see these components because the, this antenna mm, is using some filters 
uh, that needs to be also add here as a, some SMD components. And this is the uh, properly named matching network. Here we have the table which um, connects this, uh, this uh, schematic to, to the relevant information. So we have the component reference here. We have the value uh, as related to each, each component. And we also um, specify here the per number of the component used um, in the, also in, in the simulation performed. Okay. And finally, we also have the, um, the performance of the antenna in, in that PCB. So we are providing uh, the reflection coefficient in one hand and the antenna efficiency in the other hand. Um, here we see that the antenna efficiency um, is a split in the two bands. So that's for this dual band case, it's, it's how it should be. And then we see that is reaching in average for both bands a 70%. Okay. On the other hand, the reflection coefficient is mostly below minus 6 dBs. That is a good target. Um, so um, all in all, looks a, like a, an acceptable and a promising result. Um, Next, the general design recommendations. And I would like to emphasize that it is uh, pretty important to follow these recommendations. So in terms of the clearance area, for instance, uh, we recommend that uh, we need to have this clearance area, the specified dimensions of the clearance area in all the directions around the antenna component. So it must be free uh, from electronic components, all this clearance area, um, and also ground planes in all layers, including the area underneath the antenna. Very important. Antenna location. We should place the antenna location uh, in in the, as in the same place as it is recommended in in the picture of the PCB with the antenna that we discussed previously. The, in the matching network, to, to get the best performance possible, we recommend to use preferably 0402 and 0603 high Q anti-tolerance SMD components. In terms of the materials used in the um, IoT devices, we should use low-loss materials for the housings and enclosures. That's our recommendation. For multi-layer PCBs, we should ensure that all grounding sections in all the PCB layers are properly connected through vias. When using an RF module and the connection to the antenna or the matching network uh, through the transmission line, we recommend to use a 50 ohm transmission line for that in order to um, reduce the losses. Of, of this of this connection and then increase the antenna efficiency because it's it's linked to that and in terms of the ground plane layer um, it needs to be ensured a continuous conducting ground plane in at least one layer of uh, your PCB so it's always recommended to maximize the surface of uh, your ground area on the PCB to maximize its radiation performance. Okay. Um, then, uh, what I would like to do now is to go again um, to to launch another example, as as uh, I I discussed before. Um, but now changing the the, the preferred antenna, um, the preferred antenna option to another one. So let's, for instance, use the same example. 
in this case, um, that was the frequency range selected before, the size of the device, 142 by 50. Um, as a tracking, and here, say that you have been already um, working with Ignion, or you have some antenna um, for an, uh, an old device already um, in stock, and you would like to use it, and then you should be able to, or you would like to compare the performance of the antenna that has been selected by the cloud. So in this case, the 3 m extent, to, for instance, the random extent that you have in stock, right? So um, in this case, you will be able to compare the two cases. And based on that, you will be able to choose what you prefer to implement in your device. Um, let's fill in same information than before. Email, first name, last name, your company, Ignion, your area, Spain, and then Say now that you want to build a device with more units in this case, and it will take longer than before to be ready in the market. Say that you use now another RF module, not, not the ones in this list. Um, then the terms of service and the privacy policy are accepted, and then we can submit the form again. The form has been submitted, so it has reached the, the cloud. And now we should see here in the inbox the next confirmation. This is the new confirmation that we got right now, telling the same that uh, um, the intelligence cloud service uh, has been requested, and this is the, the, the reference number. Then, if we wait a bit, we should then receive the, the email here with a new report. And in the meantime, what ah, here it is. So I was about to show this first report, the single report that we have received initially in the first petition. So here it is. Um, we can see that um, all the information is shown here. You can also um, get information about the antenna selected. So from here, you can access to the data sheet, for instance. Um, you can also go to the antenna product page to see, um, to look for application nodes or some use cases that, that we are showing here the matching network as i showed you the information the performance and here is where i want to go so in the first selection when we didn't specify any any antenna we got this this behavior of of the antenna so looks like to be optimally tuned for these bands um, let's now see um, the other email we received, how it looks like. So the next one, when we um, selected the run MX10 in the preferred antenna field, 
we will get this email. So we will get one um, one report with a recommended antenna, which uh, should match the one that we got earlier when we selected choose from in the preferred uh, field, preferred antenna field, and also the best optimal performance that we are getting uh, with your selected antenna. Okay, and now here we will be able to understand that because it's explained here. So after all the initial uh, relevant data of the project, the customer name, the date, the service report number, and the Ignite support email, then here it is explained that there are two reports attached, one referring to your selected antenna, and another one is um, referring to the recommended antenna that the cloud um, would choose for you. Um, and here we see now the requirements when we have the application, asset tracking, the PCB dimensions, 142 by 50, communication standard LTE. And now here we place your selected antenna, which was in this case the run and extent, the NN02224, operating at this band and operating at the same band we have our recommended antenna, as I mentioned before. Before, So if now we click to the recommended one, we'll see that it is referring to the 3 ohm extents, which already saw before that had this performance. Um, if we click to the other one, now, we see here your selection, the placement of the run antenna, also the, the optimal placement in the PCB, in a similar way in the corner as well, with the feeding line connecting to the matching network right after the, the clearance area. With uh, these dimensions, so you can easily build uh, it in, in your device. And then all the information referring to the runm extent, all the link to the data sheet, to the antenna product page. And here we have the optimal matching network used for this antenna, for the run, to bring uh, the optimal performance in the um, frequency range defined and with the PCB dimensions defined. Here we see that the bill of materials um is is matching the the schematic now again but with these corresponding values and here we have the per numbers used for each each value um if we move then to the uh, graph using that antenna we see in this case with using the random extent we see that the um, that the antenna efficiency in the high band is similar than, than the one shown by the 3 ohm extent, so reaching the 70% average, average, even uh, being a bit uh, a, a bit better. But in the low band range, um, it's not performing as as good as as the as the 3 ohm. So there is a balance, right? Um, and that's what I wanted to show. So you can take advantage of, of, this, of this feature in the form, selecting the preferred antenna you would like to use, um, and you will get the simulation and the results of this antenna. But then you will always get as well the um, preferred option by the Antenna Intelligence Cloud service, right? So you always will be able to 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 compare which is the path you want to take. If you want to take a path where um, the best performing um, um, option is the one you want to choose, typically the recommended antenna will be the one to to use, right? If uh, you prefer having more uh, 
to to end up your, with with the same antenna being maybe a bit low in performance but uh, if you have this this one in the stock so you can use it and you fulfill the the certifications then it's it's up to you but at least we give the two options okay okay so that's what i wanted to to discuss um today about the the antenna intelligence cloud service um maybe to finalize um i would like to show you here that the um, how to how to go next in our process so here you can you can at the end of of this uh report you can click to to submit your design files button and in this case here um you would be able then to to attach here the design files of your of your device if uh, you want then to to request us um a gerber review or um some um optimization um of your circuit uh, to optimize the antenna performance so you are always able to to add this any information here that you might think that it's appropriate to um, get the, the best optimal performance in your device based on our recommendations. And finally, um, I would like to, to say that by joining the revolution, uh, you are not going to be alone. We have proven our technology to many customers. More than 30 million of antennas have been shipped to more than 1,500 OEMs. Our technology is also backed by major module makers, as well as silicon OEMs and cellular operators. And as a result, there are several reference designs available to help you jump into the design journey in the easiest and fastest possible way. And as of today, all these partners also offer access to the Antenna Intelligence Cloud. So thank you for the confidence. We look forward to power the next 100 million devices, devices enabled with virtual antenna technology. So thank you very much for your attention. And let me introduce you now, Elias Gafari, PhD, RF Applications Engineer, NA, Richardson RFPD. He will explain us how Ignion and Richardson can help you to accelerate the antenna design process. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Elias Gafari, FAE for Richardson RFPD, covering Central USA in Canada. Um, I'm based out of uh, Rochester Hills in Michigan. Um, I will start by presenting Richardson RFPD as a partner of Igneons and the distribution channel for them. I will next provide the company overview. Then I will talk about Richardson RFPD's capability, how we can help our customers with their design challenges, provide information on how we can support a design also on a bench tuning and systems integration. And finally, how to conclude a design with the customer and how to make sure that the, the design is working properly the way it's supposed to. Okay, so as I said, uh, the company overview, uh, Richardson RFPD is a subsidiary of Aero Electronics. We are the largest specialized technology distribution channel um, in the world. We focus on three key technologies, RF and microwaves in wireless, industrial IoT, and energy and power. We have specialized engineering resources for all three key technologies, uh, front field applications, engineers, um, to support all of them uh, in North America and in the world. I'm part of the RF and microwaves engineering team. Uh, as I said earlier, 
based out of Rochester Hills, just north of Detroit and Michigan. And I support uh, antennas as well for uh, IoT applications and others. We are a global company with offices in 35 countries in Europe, Asia, and Americas. We service global customers in different vertical markets, such as communications, transportation, medical, airspace, defense, automotive, and all. We have the expertise to provide system architecture trade-offs to our customers and discuss advantages and disadvantages of each of it. We also have access to a large selection of components from the best of and most popular key are a vendor, vendors in the world to select from and recommend the appropriate components for our customers' applications. We can help our customers in systems and circuit design reviews and make recommendations to reduce the number of board iterations they have to make. <clears throat> in terms of technical support, we assist our customers throughout the whole solution stage design a journey from concept, system architecture, circuit designs, production, and product lifetime support. For our RF product lines, not only we carry antennas, we also have active devices as well as discretes and MMICs and integrated front-end modules. Our second product line is RF passives and interconnect coax cables from, um, uh, from a lot of uh, popular vendors. The third product line is IoT modules um, for such as Sierra Wireless and U blocks. I will talk now about how we can support our customers in their um, design and integration, um, antenna integration into their design. The antenna element is a very sensitive component uh, to the environment that it will be uh, part of, as well as to the surrounding objects, such as shielding cans, batteries, tall components. It is also very sensitive to the mechanical housing, the type of materials, if painted, um, that, the, uh, that houses the uh, electronics. All these factors have to be taken into account during the design stage. If not, um, then there might be um, issues that we have to resolve down, down the road. The distance of the element to the ground plane um, on the circuit or the circuitry on the circuit board, as well as the cover, also the cover thickness um, of the housing are also critical parameters. They also have to be accounted for in the design stage. RFPD has the technical expertise and the hardware resources to support the integration stage with the customers. We review all these parameters in the design stage with the customers and we recommend the best scenario and layout um, for the, um, the better outcome. The benefit to the customer is getting a more solid design, which will perform better to ensure lesser design, design cycle and board turns and increases the chances of uh, passing the FCC requirements um, and guarantee um, a passing, passing all the requirements and specifications. In terms of technical design support, we assist the customer throughout the whole solution design journey, from concept, system architecture, circuit designs, production, and product lifetime support. 
So by that we mean we review the design with the customer, schematic and layout, and the mechanical housing and all the components that are um, part of the uh, design. We provide recommendations accordingly to get better results. We provide the green light to them uh, to order PCBs after the reviews um, are done. Once the customer builds their prototypes, they can share with us their measurements results. We determine if closer support is needed, such as we can do that over phone calls, emails, um, teams, um, or even face-to-face, -face, depending on the circumstances. Or even if there's a need, uh, they can always ship the hardware to us uh, to measure and tune on our benches. So we tune the boards in our lab if that was needed to optimize the pins matching and provide the results as well as uh, discuss with the customers and send the hardware back for the customer to the customer so that they can test in their uh, in their labs and make sure that uh, they're getting what uh, the results that uh, are expected. The tuning optimization that we go through is uh, we measure the input impedance first as it is on the board, determine where the impedance is on the Smith chart, and then go through um, the Smith chart to match it back to 50 ohms, which the chipset or the front end module, if any used in between, are expecting. And the reason of doing that is we want to guarantee that none of the power or energy is getting into the from the picked up from the antenna into the chipset or being transmitted from the chip to, chipset to the antenna. We don't want any of that to get reflected back because this would be counted as a uh, wasted um, energy. And and once that tuning is done, then we we are guaranteed that the radiation pattern um, will be there and the antenna will radiate the, the way it's supposed to. Once we get this, uh, uh, the, 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 those results, we send them to the customer, we discuss with them um, and review uh, the results and make sure that um, they are ready to send the uh, hardware over for um, uh, qualifications and uh, they're more guaranteed to have a successful and uh, passing of all the requirements that they have to, to test. Well, thank you very much, Elias and um, Mark, for a very informative presentation, a lot of material covered. We do have a few minutes for questions, so let me invite our audience, if you have not already submitted one, to uh, just type yours in the Q&A box on the, on the chat on the window panel. So we have a couple of questions. Um, Mark, back, let's start with you uh, as I scan the list here. Uh, a couple of questions relate to, does the report include beam pattern plots um, and, or radiation pattern uh, expectations from the antenna design? Uh, hello. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for attending the webinar. Um, in terms of this question, um, uh, the report itself, as it was shown, it doesn't include the, the radiation patterns. It only includes the, the graph of the S11 and the, and the efficiency. Um, but uh, this data is always available, uh, so we can easily um, bring it to the, to the customer if, if there is the need. So you can always contact us, and uh, we will uh, come back to you with, with these uh, radiation patterns. Very good. Another question, can you talk about how the matching network is optimized? Uh, is it based on the expected antenna impedance from the simulation, the antenna data sheet, and 
What if a case where the application is not in free space and the antenna impedance is um, not really 50 ohms? Yeah, um, so I think there are two questions in in one here. The first one is is about the, um, the matching network, how it is optimized. So what is happening in the cloud is that uh, the simulation of the antenna uh, together with the uh, PCB um, is simulated um, as it is shown in the report. So the same um, picture that is shown in the report is the PCB that is being simulated in the cloud. So from there, we get the, um, the impedance of the antenna, and then the matching network is uh, optimized to uh, tune the antenna efficiency to the best performing uh, possible um, way. Um, then, uh, this is done, obviously, as a proof of concept. So the simulation is performed uh, in the free space. And uh, in case that uh, it's not uh, the situation that, that we have with the current device, we have also another service, um, which uh, is, is called uh, the 2.0 service, where we can perform the whole simulation in the device. Also, adding um, the, wh whatever we need uh, in, the, in the space to make it more uh, real, uh, to make it more close to reality. But that would be not a proof of concept, but already uh, a different service where we can get a very accurate um, optimization of the antenna. Okay, a couple of questions have come in. If you have a device you're designing that actually has a couple different wireless uh, standards, so in this case it's uh, LTE and GPS in the same device. And the question is, um, how would you approach that design? Do you need two separate antennas, and how, how would the, uh, the layout be accommodated for both? Um, of them at the same time. Uh, thanks for this question. It's, it's a very good one. Um, so what we what is happening in in the AIC service um, is that we aim for the best performing um, uh, antenna solution. So in this case, uh, the cloud will select typically um, two different antennas and each one will be uh, used uh, to uh, be tuned uh, for each standard at the, at the corresponding frequency ranges. So that's how um, the cloud will, will work in that way, and will uh, allocate these antennas in the um, most uh, uh, optimal way to get the best performing cases for each one. Okay. In any case, I would like to point out that uh, if we have, for instance, restrictions of space or we can only uh, use uh, a single antenna to fulfill both um, protocols, it, it, can, it can be done uh, using our, our uh, TRIO antenna, NN03310, um, uh, and there is a specific uh, application note uh, um, explaining how to do it. Okay. Another question um, from one of our viewers. Will your report address um, in-band and out-of-band performance and in terms of compliance with, say, FCC or other international regulations? In the current report, uh, very good question. Uh, in the current report, uh, it is not shown, um, but we have this in the roadmap. So we are planning to add this in the report um, to have at least uh, a guideline if the um, resulting performance of the antenna will pass or not pass uh, this kind of certifications. Um, I would like to add as well that uh, Ignion also provides uh, this certification service. So you can always reach out to us, and we will also um, 
explain if if the uh, antenna is passing or not uh, um, the corresponding certification that needs to be uh, addressed. That sounds very helpful. Uh, a couple of questions kind of related. Um, one of our viewers is asking, what is inside the antenna module? And uh, the second question is, can you achieve circular polarization from the antenna? Um, to the question of what is inside to the antenna module, uh, I think it's it's just uh, protected, so we cannot we cannot go in into this deep detail about the uh, circular polarization. Um, it it's not the case, so um, we are working in in uh, the the nature of these antennas is linear. Okay. And one more question before we wrap up. Can you provide some general rules of thumb for minimizing the required space for various bands, uh, including the ground plane, uh, if, you're, if you're working on, say, a module that has the uh, 2.4 gigahertz and, and LTE bands? How would you generally recommend minimizing the amount of space? That's a very good question. So um, I would say that it always depends on, on the needs, on the requirements you need to, to pass. Um, what I can tell is that there is a, an application node, uh, also with a TRIO MX10, uh, the NN03 310 antenna, um, addressing this, this, this question. So in there, you will be able to to look for different uh, PCB sizes uh, performance so that you can see which is the impact of um, um, reducing or increasing the length of these PCBs. Very good. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time for more questions. Uh, thanks to Mark Sands and Elias Gaffari. Uh, you've given a very good presentation about this uh, cloud-based capability. Sounds like a great way to get an initial uh, design scoped out. And then between uh, the two companies, Ignion and Richardson RFPD, you can provide additional services to uh, go into more complexity if the customer requires that. So it's a, it's a really interesting development in, uh, in this space. So before we end the uh, webinar, I'll remind everyone that the presentation has been recorded and it will be available to replay in about an hour. You'll find it at the events section of the Microwave Journal website. From the home page, you just click on events, then you'll see archived webinars and events, and that will take you to the, uh, the presentation. So if your colleagues would benefit from watching this and they happen to miss the uh, event today, please let them know. They can catch up with it. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Have a good rest of your week.